Welcome to the Inner Temple, one of the four Inns of Court which have been established here in the centre of the City of London for upwards of 650 years with the responsibilities for training lawyers who wish to become court advocates, that is to say, barristers. We also provide office space for the professional barristers, known as chambers. But when the inn was founded over nine centuries ago, the principal residents were not lawyers, they were a brotherhood of crusading monks, the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar were an order of warrior monks who were founded at the beginning of the 12th century to protect pilgrims in the Holy Land and they became hugely powerful and influential order. And this, the whole temple area where we are this weekend, was their headquarters in London. Pole position in London's cityscape, Fleet Street, the river, and here right between them is the temple. And their grandest and proudest building was this church. It's the earliest Gothic building in England, built in the 1160s. 20 years before its consecration, and you can see it's the most spectacularly beautiful space. It was built in imitation of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, the site of Christ's own death and burial and rising, and the sepulchre in Jerusalem is round. And so when the Templars built this church, they were recreating the shape and so the sanctity of the sepulchre itself. To the medieval mind, we are now in Jerusalem. Well, this year we've all been celebrating Magna Carta, the first great English Bill of Rights, foundational for all constitutions in the common law world. And the temple was King John's London headquarters in the months leading up to Magna Carta. So the king, beleaguered, embattled, and very defensive, was here for a total of five or six weeks in the months leading up to Runnymede itself. And it was here in the temple, somewhere within 50 yards of where we are now, that some of the great preliminary charters and negotiations took shape. And among the vital knights, the most central figures in the creation of Magna Carta were William Marshall, Earl of Pembroke, the greatest knight of the age, and his son, William Marshall II. And here they are, he's the knight's effigies just beyond, and here, nearer me, are plaster casts of these effigies taken for the great exhibition in the 19th century. So the church this year is a memorial to the sepulchre, of course, but also to Magna Carta, the first great Bill of Rights. After the Templars moved out, the lawyers moved in. Practice debates known as moots, were held in the hall, which was laid out just like a court, with a bench and a bar. A moot is a type of mock trial. The contestants are generally in, in this hall, the students, uh, and they will argue about a point of law which is in dispute. The most important thing is not so much the result and who's got the law right, but who has actually presented their case best and most persuasively to the person who's judging it. It's one of the two main ways that we have taught advocacy in this inn and taught the law in this inn over the centuries. The other uh, is through a series of readings which used to take place in the, this, well not this hall, but its predecessors, uh, by a man called the Reader, uh, who would uh, read essentially a series of lectures uh, over dinner. This hall, together with the halls of the other inns of court, of course, uh, is very much the cradle uh, of common law learning. Shakespeare uses Inner Temple for a crucial scene in Henry VI, Part I. The Plantagenets are preparing for civil war, and the nobleman must choose between the House of Lancaster and the House of York. They select emblems from the rose beds in the Inner Temple garden, red for Lancaster, white for York. So this tranquil setting gave rise to the War of the Roses. 
The inn suffered frequently from fire damage during the 17th and 18th centuries. The Great Fire of London reached the inn at about supper time on the 4th of September 1666. The Great Fire uh, was coming this way, of course, from the city of London, uh, and as you reach the borders of the temple, really 50 yards that way to the east, the flames were coming towards the church, and the final fire break which prevented the fire from reaching the church was just 20 yards the other side of that wall. It was a very, very close run thing. Sir Christopher Wren restored many of the damaged buildings here at the inn. And then uh, our second close escape was in the Blitz in 1941, uh, in, on the worst night of the Blitz of all, 10th of May 1941, an incendiary bomb landed above the present pulpit, <laughs> swept out all of the roof above this vault, destroyed the organ, all the Victorian woodwork, cracked all the columns in the keat. It was, it was a terrible gutting of the church. Clement Attlee, Britain's post-war Prime Minister, studied, lived and died here. Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru, the first leader of independent India, were members. And Jinnah, the first president of Pakistan. When I was called nearly 50 years ago now, uh, over half the people who were called with me were from uh, foreign jurisdictions, mostly the old Commonwealth and the Dominions, but uh, now uh, we have uh, people from about 20 or more different countries called to the bar every call night. Uh, and uh, that sends out from here uh, a message of our standards uh, and uh, how the law, we believe, should be practiced. And I think it is a great mark of the respect in which the practice of advocacy and the law in this country is, is held across the world. Uh, that people are so anxious to come here to gain the qualification as an, as an English barrister.